Hey everybody, my name is Colin Slaap, watchmaker from the Netherlands. And this is live watchmaking pre-recorded, but still we don't know what to expect. Anything can happen and probably will. Uh, an antique Russian wristwatch converted uh, pocket watch but still from the 1920s and as you all know probably I don't do any work up front but I am really really curious um, what the quality will be of a 1920s Russian watch uh, we do all kinds of watches over here from high-end to modern to antiques um, nice to do something different for, for a while for this time um, it is a converted pocket watch movement but still um, original 1920s and maybe we can be surprised by the quality <laughs> maybe not um, there is no pendant, so um, it is designed as a wristwatch. Huge, but still. Um, here it is. Well, as you can see, a biggie. But let's have a look on the inside. Um, I think this is gunmetal. see where is the lid there we are and what do we have here there it is 1928 Well, I've been to Russia. I traveled uh, the complete country, but I don't read it. Maybe if you got an idea, please put it in the comments. It would be very nice, very helpful. If you have any idea well interesting and then the movement there we are of course pocket watch it's a lever escapement and no um, horrible cylinder escapement. We see a broken screw from the winding wheel, quite common, because almost always is it left-handed screw thread. But there are exceptions and uh, movements like these, that is the exception. So this is a normal thread, so um, I'm convinced we can get it out. Um, and let's have a look what we find. Uh, nice to see fast and slow in Cyrillic uh, symbols. Well, the owner is quite fond of the movement, so we're going to do a full restoration. First thing I notice is quite a bit of jewels. So the jewels are ruby, even from the 1920s synthetic ruby, but we prefer synthetic ruby because it's more homogeneous. Homogeneous. So that's a good thing in watchmaking. No inclusions, no cracks, stuff like that. And well, what do we see? And it's a very hard material. 
So as a rule of thumb, the, again, there are exceptions. As a rule of thumb, the more rubies, the better the quality. Well, at the moment, that is the camera. And you're watching with me through my microscope live as we are. Well, do a visual inspection first of the watch. Well, the broken screw head. Well, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. It is extremely dirty. Well, I believe these are the sugar loaf screws, uh, dial feet retaining screws. As you can see, it has been of some quality because the screw heads once were highly polished, black polish. We even see a temperature compensated balance wheel. Well, that's quality. Then we see, oh, is that rust? That is rust. Well, we do love a challenge. Rust on the balance spring. But then again, it's blued uh, carbon steel. What do we see next? It is in need of a good clean. A bit lower. Ah. Well, we found some DNA of the previous watchmaker. next the pellet fork grotty yeah it might benefit <laughs> of a full restoration there the pivots hey, what is that is that rust we have to be very careful when we inspect the pivots because this might be rusty well well there is no doubt where the oxidation come from. I hope I can show you. That is rust. <laughs> it's like looking at Pirates of the Caribbean, something you scraped off the bottom of the sea. Oh well, again, <laughs> we do like a challenge. Hey. We have, there is, there might be something strange going on with the uh, balance spring because look here, there's the final winding. And then there is the final bit. You would expect it a bit more there. Hmm. Okay. Well, see what happens. Uh, let's remove the power of the mainspring and let's have a look, simply have a look. Is it already done? Yeah. Okay. Well, as part of the visual inspection is always the ratchet wheel. No tools needed, that is going to be hammer time. Uh, I try to, uh, in that corner there, put a link to how you reduce the whole, si whole size 
because we simply watch this the hole has been too big and there's way too much play well. Let's have a look. There's the arbor. Enough said. You don't have to be a watchmaker to see that this is really, really worn. So please have the. Uh, if you're interested in watchmaking, please have a look at our video uh, hammer time. Again, check the link and then you can see how we reduce the hole size without removing material, keeping everything. I don't do any work up front, but I slightly loosened this screw. So there we go. without making scratches or stuff but you can see this is the usual direction for a screw very unusual for the winding wheel yeah, simply drop and screw so we have to find a screw that is exactly like this one or we have to make one on the lathe so everything is looking perfect when we finished with this movement hmm. Try to get underneath with a lever, usually for removing the hands. There we go. Not too much force, but... Well, in, if, any was, if anyone was in doubt if there had been some moisture in this movement, um, I think we know by now. Okay, no more power on the mainspring, so we're not working on a grenade. It cannot explode. Hey, a screw missing in my screwdriver. Oh no, it just loosened. Well, um, next stop is removing the winding stem and crown via that screw, then via that half screw, that screw head should be half, that is retaining the movement in the watch case. And then we remove the movement from the case and then we can see inside remove the hands remove the dial stuff like that but first I find that simply having a look at the winding stem tells you so much about maintenance Not too much oil. Well, it's, um, it's very interesting the way we do it over here um, is these edges 
are really really sharp in a straight 90 degree angle and the way we learn it here in at least the Dutch watchmaking school but basically in Western Europe is to well, we call it break the edges get with a very fine file get over the edges and that will make that the sliding pinion I'll show you in a minute uh, doesn't catch on this square because the sliding pinions go back and forth so we always call it breaking the edges so with a very fine file make sure that this 90 degree angle has got slightly uh, another facet on it and that makes the, the sliding of the sliding pinion um, far more reliable interesting that uh, that isn't like this and it looks like an original that's what I really hope to see uh, again I don't do any work up front um, like to see what if there are influences in the 1920s Russian watchmaking um, we already can see that the layout uh, of this particular movement reminds me more of Eastern France the French um, ebauche uh, ebauche is the term commonly used for um, a half product so all the holes are drilled for the pivots uh, but no decoration stuff like that usually that is uh, being referred as um, a Bosch but now there is a lid on the front but not from the back Let's check the screw, the retaining screw. Yeah. We know for sure it's coming out of the front. I will show you. There. It was retained like this. You see the space between the screw head over there and the watch case so it was retaining uh, the movement coming out of the front uh, it's like this so it cannot move that like uh, downwards if the retaining screw was like this it was retaining going upwards so it has to come out from the front but I don't see a uh, There. This pivot point is from the back, but I don't see one from the front. I have to see how to open it. I don't expect a rotating bezel. That is more um, military. Click bezel. Nice one. Very light material. Might even be silver. So, again, first impression. This is cold enamel. Doesn't really work. Uh, the dial is um, enamel, so that is a molten glass on top of a copper plate.
this is unusual. It looks like glue. It's going over the print. Huh. Interesting. Oh well. Hey. Is that moisture or, or some stuff? Here we go. See what I mean? Or is it the heavy uh, ink being used for the numbers? No, no moisture. Strange, hard to see through the crystal, but now it's reflecting the light directly on the enamel. Completely different. Well, I'm going to try to restore the dial. <laughs> Even a hair curled around the sub second hand. <laughs> oh well, maybe I'm just envious that the, <laughs> the previous watchmaker had so much hair. Even though it's an enamel um, dial, which means glass, so it's uh, well, not too difficult to have a good clean, but you have to be very careful. So this is a foil, and then I'm not actually touching the hands, not actually touching the dial, and if the hands are really stuck, they don't go through the roof <laughs> even more hair <laughs> look at this is it a <laughs> a barber shop watch <laughs> look at this You can populate a, a complete planet with the DNA material you'll be find. <laughs> well, it's a pre-recorded session. So I cannot answer your questions. Usually every Tuesday, half past eight, uh, we do a, a live session with a chat. So hope of try to uh hope you will catch us live next time and i'll be able to answer your question um okay hands are extremely delicate just look at the design it is poured it is not uh, um, filed or milled in any way but they are really delicate so they are safe and now I'm going to try to pop out the movement from the front. Let's have a look. There we are. No stress. Well, let's have a look at the dial feed screws. They are those ones and they really cut in the copper of the dial feet. You see one side is straight. So if I it was really loose but now you can see I release the dial feet but I don't think it was kept in place by this screw. Same here. Now 
everything is released. You see the flat side is now facing the dial feed screw. When we found the, oh, there we go, glue traces on the front of the dial, but it isn't glued in place, luckily. The same brown residue. Uh, as I was telling, the enamel is molten glass, but that's why the back of the usually of the enamel dials are enameled as well uh, that will prevent it from uh, um, curving upwards so um, an exact uh, same thickness of enamel on both sides uh, will keep the dial straight during the firing Well, what do we see? Even more hair. How, how is that possible when there's a dial over it and uh, a crystal? It is very unusual. And kind of gross. <laughs> well, well, again, this is probably not a leaking battery, <laughs> so that's more uh, corrosion. But it, it will it will be visible, but it will be better uh, when it went through the cleaning machine. Here is the sliding pinion that goes over the, the square from the winding stem. And the sliding action will be improved by breaking the edges of the square of the winding stem, as I just showed you. Lovely spring, even with straight graining finishing on top. This is quite elegant. It is a high and even here, again here the moisture, but it's almost a hundred years old, not too bad. There are the marks quite common of uh, uh, four watches this age. It is a high, a thick wheel. Thicker than usual. Cool. Even more hair. Oh well, um, this is a special cannon pinion because this tip is a spike running through the movements. As you can see here, so it has to be pushed out, and that will release the cannon pinion. Usually the friction is from the cannon pinion to this pivot, but now this cannon pinion is friction fit uh, to this pin, and the pin, the, the friction for the hand setting is in the cylindrical um, center wheel. And 
this is an insane amount of play. in focus that shouldn't be there oh well well with the Horia tool Try to push it out if there's a blank. There's that one. Yeah. Uh, on top, I'm using the flat one. Is it a three or a four mil? Four mil. So this is the number three. Let's get the other one. That is the four millimeter insert. So on top, there's the blank. And we have to push it out so we need a hollow one underneath so the pin can go through See if I can show it. Uh, well, you are watching. Oh no, uh, wrong one. Um, execute. Return. That's the one. I was looking for so so there's a hollow one on the bottom flat one on the top See if I can get it in focus. That's better. <laughs> it's in. Uh, of course, the image is mirrored. So. I got this one from a very happy client it's uh, visible there we are come on focus well Jaeger Coultre anyway so nice one There we are. 
Now the pin will be sticking out from the back. There we are. So now we can remove that one. It's a common construction for pocket watches, but not so for um, wrist watches. So there we are. There's the very hairy cannon pinion. <laughs> and um, needless to say, we have to be very careful for the subsecond pinion. Very fragile. Simply there it is. It should be slightly bent, I think it is, because that is providing the friction within the It's a bit too dark, but it's hollow and cylindrical. We had to remove that cannon pinion and the pin first, otherwise we cannot um, disassemble this movement. And again, the only thing that is sticking out is the pinion for the sub-second, so even if you put down this movement on your bench like this gone immediately it's hardened steel it is horrible and antique uh, russian wristwatch converted pocket watch but designed the case as a wristwatch uh, not easy to obtain parts well, next to impossible because interchangeability of movements from this age hardly hardly so nice and stable on the movement holder I like this one but there are so many others would back steel lie, fight, kill, and die? <laughs> no, Melissa Etheridge. Uh, there are so many others. Um, but then again, it is nice and stable and it is protecting that insanely delicate pivot. Um, first, I'm going to remove the balance wheel and balance cock because it is still kind of strange that we see here the spring you see it the, the final winding of the bell spring and then there is a bit of spring there it doesn't add up something is happening underneath so we have to see the amount of hair is just Oh well. <laughs> it must have been open or otherwise a watch movement is so protected from the uh, via the case. How can the amount of hair or Or maybe the, the previous watchmaker was um, working on it with a cat on his lap. And uh, I've been expecting you, <laughs> Mr. Slap. <laughs> if you like this stream, it would be very 
helpful and nice if you hit the like button. Uh, you can have a look on our YouTube channel, Chronoglide. I think there are over 300 videos about watchmaking. Some disassembly and talking uh, during disassembly, but some um, very informative and instructional videos on watchmaking. I really would like to see what is happening with the spring. Are. There is the strange bend. There is the rust. Um, tip. These retaining pins are not cylindrical they are how do you call it concave whatever you do well that is the thick end that is the thinner end so let's see if we can show you It has to come out well, that way. Whatever you do, do not try to push out this pin. Because when you push, you're applying some force and it's a very small uh, area. If you miss, you go through the very delicate uh, balance spring. Always pull it out and pull it in place because you're applying just about the same force but if you slide off you're moving away from the very delicate part instead of pushing right through. Trust me, been there, done that. And uh, tip number two. I'm not sure if it's here. The special tool. Yeah. Let me see. There. It is a special tool because it says special tool. <laughs> Simple. Uh, watchmaking is expensive enough. Here you can see. Um, old uh, tweezer and one tip is slightly smaller than the other one so if you want to take it out yeah you can place it a bit like this you have a bit more control um, I always will try to pull it out but if it's really 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 stuck they can use the tweezer like this uh, it can be a very helpful tool for yeah, having some applying some force but still have control so i hope it's helpful well fork hey are the banking pins slightly inward or is there wear in an indentation because it's unusual <laughs> that the banking pin is overlapping the the pellet fork and 
intriguing two different jewels this one is very high quality domed because you can see the, the shining of the light this one is far more new and flat so there already has been a repair or a sourcing problem maybe and this is very again a hair of course I think you can see old lubrication and the pivot of the uh, pellet fork is never lubricated is it ah, they are bent that is unusual um, because um, if you're into this please have a look at how a mechanical watch works uh, I'll try to put in a link over there as well again um, have a look when you finish this video <laughs> and hit the like button um, banking pins if they are like this the pellet fork there's always a bit of end shake uh, because if it was stuck it cannot move so there's always a bit of end shake in the pellet for in uh, pellet fork and the wheels and that is that this you see the up and down motion that is end shake and this is division so there's always a bit of play there should be a tiny bit tiny bit of play but if the banking pins are like this even the tiniest amount of play means they are hitting here or hitting there so there is has to be a huge different difference sorry in performance or accuracy even if it's face up or face down so the banking pins should always be straight so even though there's a tiny bit of play the banking pins will always hit uh, the same and not like this I hope that makes sense but I think they I know they replaced at least this ruby and you can see it's all uh, against the end so they placed the ruby in the pellet fork and they did the adjustment usually you do the adjustment with sliding the, the rubies and now they did the adjustment via the banking pins not the way to go again for the accuracy and, but still hey um, it's a um, almost a hundred year old movement and we're watching through a microscope at the moment so the screwdriver nice and sharp to remove the screws of the bridge of the pellet fork and even though it's really rusty rusty and crusty <laughs> this the, the green is the copper alloy the, the brass usually but even though it's rusty I'm very happy as well 
things. Just pry it up. Really dry, no lubrication whatsoever. If this one is cleaned, it will be so. It was very high quality. Hey, a screwed in uh, pivot, easy to uh, replace. The safety pin should be a bit more straight, so that will need some attention. Well, I was do the this test with a back and forth motion because then I have a look at the pivots because you reverse uh, uh, the rotating direction so if you go back and forth wiggle wiggle if there's way too much play in the pivots you see like this simple test never fails so now It is going back and forth, but there is a bit of more. And rust. So we really have to check and inspect the, the pivots. Um, next stop. Escape wheel, it is a bit random, but why not? I could have removed the um, main barrel first. But the quality, yeah. very very old lubrication uh, close look at the pivots again highly polished escape wheel nice one some crap <laughs> in there and then the pivots oh that looks worn We really have to work on that one. Hair, of course. Well, we have to clean it first. But probably have to burnish the pivots. And maybe then replace the, the jewel. Sli slightly smaller hole. And then it will be running perfect again. Well, we have to address this insane amount of play. Shouldn't be a problem. Just have a look at the hammer time on our YouTube channel Chronoglide. And doing this pre-recorded session, uh, again really brings home the the added value that there is uh, with an, uh, a chat and that I can answer your questions oh 
another interesting thing. I just removed the three screws of the bridge from the main barrel. And look at this. Usual again. You see one is quite a bit shorter. And that is because it is underneath. Let me see. There, there. Just underneath there. Here is a recess because of the winding and sliding pinion. And so the, the, screw, the short screw is underneath here. And the rest has got so more, so much more thread. And then you can see here it is milled out, so that's why one is a bit smaller. Um, we see quite a bit of uh, movements when the uh, screws are just in the wrong place, and you get so much more well, defects, malfunctions. Still keeping in mind the pivot, the, the very delicate pivot of the fourth wheel, seconde rat. Yeah. You see, there's a lot of material we can move for the hammer time and reduce the whole size. The moisture is getting everywhere. But then again, beautiful part, nicely machined. Winding pinion with the round hole and the sliding pinion with the square hole. So this is so that's the position of the winding wheel pinion, and this is the position of the sliding pinion with the the square. Well, see if all the teeth are intact. That is okay. There's a T hook. Yeah, the same there. So the end of the spring is retained by these two holes instead of the side of the barrel. Everywhere the same symbols for the production process. There's the T hook. But we probably replace the spring. Yeah. It's so old. Okay, well, the 
Eldritch. See what this looks like. Well, this is an unusual design. No maintenance for such a long time. Some rust. Mm. Oh well, the center wheel. And the grotty pinion. <laughs> Top pinion, not too bad. And I think if we clean this one first, pre rinse and then clean it. And here, the final one this is the very delicate one with the extremely long pivot on the other side. There it is. Not too bad. It seems to me that um, it was maintained pretty good during the use of the watch. Then there was some moisture and some play in the main barrel. And after that it wasn't used anymore and I just put it away because we see extremely old lubrication and not too much wear on the parts due to lack of maintenance uh, because the main barrel well the steel arbor is moving in the brass uh, bridge movement so even if it's maintained okay far less if you put the beautiful uh, Molycote DX um, grease on there but um, that is normal wear and tear especially for a pocket watch even though this one is designed as an, uh, a wristwatch from 1928 Russian make interesting stuff lovely movement I must admit higher quality than I expected Temperature compensated balance wheel, beautiful polished um, uh, pellet fork, uh, lovely design of the movement, uh, polished screws he screw heads, yeah, beautiful stuff. So we're going to clean the dial, uh, clean the case, but it is gun metal so we cannot polish it. And uh, pre-rinse, get all <laughs> rid of all the hair uh, in the movement, and then uh, uh, reduce the wear and tear, build it up slowly, and then with a the new spring and the proper size of the pivots um, fit in the, the jewels and the holes. I know uh, we can get this uh, perfect again, restore it to perfection. All of you, thank you so much for your attention. If you like this stream, please hit the like button and um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Chrono Glide. That would be very helpful. 
we do the stream live uh, every Tuesday, half past eight Central European time with a chat. So um, if you have any questions, well, uh, please let me know. Now you can leave them in the comments. I read every single one of them and uh, I'll try to answer your questions straight away. All of you, thank you so much. Enjoy your evening. See you. Bye bye.